Hello and welcome to this podcast, My Stories of Chinese Porcelain. I am Tu Rei Ming, a craftsman and writer on Chinese porcelain based in Qingdua Shen, China, known as the porcelain capital. Also called Chinese ceramics, porcelain's origins come from China. It is one of humanity's most ancient inventions, and I am fascinated as to how my ancestors created these timeless masterpieces and how this unique and exquisite material made its way to all corners of the world, even giving the modern world the name China. Here is the first part of my eight-part podcast series on Chinese porcelain, and I hope you enjoy listening to my stories. A story told from fragments of porcelain. One day in late June of 2005, Several fishermen in the East China Sea off Fujian set off on their regular fishing trip. They laid out their nets near the bowl reefs in Pingtang, hoping to catch something. After bringing in their nets, the fishermen were both disappointed and surprised. They were disappointed as they didn't catch many fish. However, they were surprised to see several complete pieces of porcelain caught in their nets. There were legends that there had been a shipwreck somewhere near in the past, and so the fishermen believed they had found several pieces of ancient porcelain. News travelled quickly, and soon a local team of archaeologists learned of the discoveries made by the fishermen and began searching underwater for more clues. They were lucky, and they soon discovered the shipwreck. This particular shipwreck was given the name Bowl Reef One, and the entire process of salvaging the sunken ship was broadcast live by China Central Television and was a huge sensation. In the end, more than 16,000 pieces of priceless porcelain were recovered. The hull of the ship and many of the other things on board the Bowl Reef One had been badly damaged and rotted. In fact, the porcelain pieces recovered were the only objects that had survived, soaked down at the bottom of the sea for 300 years. Even so, they were just as glorious, clean and perfectly preserved as if they were new. We can thus refer to these porcelains as living fossils that have recorded histories and stories. There are many people who think that the histories that are recorded through porcelain are meaningless, as porcelain in general has now become old-fashioned and out of date. However, if we stop and take a moment to ponder, we will discover that porcelain is used in our lives far more than we realise. Porcelain in use includes the toilet in the home, the tiles that cover the walls and floors, and needless to say, everyday cups and plates. Even the return capsule of the renowned Shenzhou 9 spacecraft used ceramic materials for a heat shield. Porcelain not only records stories of the past, but also presents stories of the present. The reason why porcelain can be used so diversely is due to the special nature of the material itself. It is hard, weather and water resistant, unaffected by wind and rain, as well as being impervious to the cold of winter and the heat of summer. Porcelain is one of the earliest materials invented by mankind, and its existence has been accompanied by the evolution of human civilization. Not only has porcelain never been replaced by new technology and materials, it has also lived through many eras, playing an increasingly important role in the lives of humans throughout history. Apart from its importance to human civilization, porcelain is also a high-end product available on the black market. Regarded as the most expensive luxury product, Porcelain has led fashion trends throughout our world for hundreds of years and is a vital commodity for trade between China and the West. As such, porcelain is also considered an exchange link between Chinese and Western cultures. King Louis XIV was one of the most revered and renowned kings in French history. Known as Louis the Great and the Sun King, he commissioned the building of the famous Palace of Versailles. He also built the Trianon Palace for his beloved Madame de Maintenon. The palace used many blue and white tiles, making it look like a huge blue-white piece of porcelain. The insides of the palace are filled with porcelain from the east. As such, it was known to all as the Porcelain Palace. 
Envious of King Louis's beautiful porcelain-style palace, many kings across Europe followed suit. The place where I live and work is close to the mighty Chunhe River in Qingnuashen, and also close to ancient Foliang County. Today, Foliang is a large county under the jurisdiction of Qingduashen City. Now little known to others, Foliang has its name written in history long before Qingduashen got its name. One of the Tang Dynasty's famous poets, Bai Jui's poem "Song of a Lute Player," mentions Foliang as such. Because my husband values business more than his family, he went to Foliang last month to procure teas. Later, even though Qingduashen gained fame and attention, it was in fact Foliang County that had jurisdiction over Qingduashen. Over time, Foliang County has become a very large county, and its governor can reach the higher rank of Grade Five, whereas general county governors can only be graded as seven in the Chinese administration system. Since the Ming Dynasty, the county council has been situated at its current location. Which means the administrative centre has been here for hundreds of years. Fragments of ancient porcelain from various dynasties lie scattered in the surrounding fields. Over the past few years, as the city has been renovated, some broken pieces of porcelain have been found in the area of landfill pits. Such discoveries were a source of excitement for ceramic lovers. It felt similar to the discovery of the ancient royal tombs. Even though the landfill itself was not discovered, the number of porcelain pieces found in the area was still astounding. From time to time, it's been my habit every afternoon to walk around slowly on the main road, often stopping to see pieces of porcelain in the fields. Sometimes a vegetable plot would have been turned over, revealing many new tiles exposed underneath. Although most of these porcelain pieces were not worth much. They were all first-hand materials imprinted with their own histories. A piece of porcelain can tell a story, and although our knowledge gives us a good picture of the history of ceramics, a single fragment may always lead to a different understanding. Starting in the next part of my podcast, I will look back to the origins of porcelain and its complicated journey towards the exquisite forms we so much admire today. Indeed, porcelain became so famous that it accidentally gave birth to a word used across the world to describe not only the ceramics but also the name of my country itself. I hope you will join me on this journey. This has been a China Plus podcast. Original Chinese reading was by Sang Liang Chongdu, with English translation by Graham Stevens. If you like the show, please give us a rating and subscribe to us wherever you listen. If you've got any questions or feedback, please feel free to contact us via email at podcast at cri dot com dot cn or on Twitter at hashtag China Plus Pods.